Hi everybody, happy Saturday, happy New Year's Eve. It is I, hope you're doing well. So the reason why I'm standing in front of the Brooklyn Academy of Music's J Sharp building, Peter J Sharp building, excuse me, is because um, I'm a few blocks away from one of my friends who lives down here and it's close to the nail salon. So I just had my nails done because I do that every Saturday or every other Saturday. And she was supposed to meet me uh, immediately after getting my nails done and of course she didn't because she's wonderful in that way but she calls me seconds after I leave the nail salon to say hey I am now ready to meet you in just 15 minutes so I love this person she knows when she watches she's gonna say that's son of a gun anyway so I'm standing out here waiting for her because I'd rather stand here to wait for her as opposed to standing outside her villa to wait for her and then broadcast from in front of her villa and y'all all know where she lived because that's not cool good morning Jean. happy new year's eve so the reason um so i want to take this opportunity to tell a story because you know we're all storytellers right so a few days ago early in the week i was um at the at the job and i was sitting there i'm not gonna say sulking because sulking is not a good look for me i'm not a good sulker but i was like i guess i was kind of like oh you know, it's the end of the year and da, 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 and doing one of those whole, you know, year end, let me go into my checklist and see how I did or how I was doing and so forth and so on. So, and I was sitting there going, yeah, I've been quite successful um, at the day job. In fact, I've been really successful at the day job. But then I'm like, well, what have I done with my acting career? And I went through my list and I was like, I did some things, you know, that happened, that happened, that happened. Is it where I would have wanted it to be? No, but... So anyway, so I'm sitting there. So maybe I was, I was semi-sulking. Maybe I was partially sulking. Maybe I was a, whatever the word is for one eighth of a sulk, if that's even possible. So I was doing one eighth of a sulk when I was doing this thing. And I walked past one of my colleagues and um, he gave me a really quick, interesting story that I'm going to share with you guys. Ross, you're amazing. I'm, I'm just here. So and my colleague says to me, he goes, um, as I was talking about life, you know, I said, oh, you know, he was like, he said something, to, I forget what he said, but it was something to the effect like, um, I forget, he was, he said something and I, and I made some half joke about, you know, oh, I don't have a, I don't have a life, blah, 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 blah. And this guy, and he always does this because he's a writer. In addition to working at the day job, he's also a writer and an actor. You know how we're all like multi hyphenates, we're doing 101 things. So he's doing all these things. But I think that as a writer, it gave him the vocabulary to say what he said to me, which I'm about to say to you. So I said, you know, I don't have a life. And I half, half laughed and so on and so on. And he reaches into the drawer, drawer, and he pulls out a rubber band. And when he, and, and every time he does this or does anything, it's like he's one of those guys that when you speak to him, you can always tell. I mean, even though he's not like, he's not like someone's grandmother or great grandmother, you can always tell that when you say something to him, you, he's going to like prepare to give you a speech or a lesson. And you're just like... Ah oh, man, I wasn't ready for this. But this time, I, I you know, I, I, again, I wasn't ready, but here it was. So he reaches into the drawer and pulls out a rubber band. And I'm like, oh man, a rubber band, what the hell? So, and he takes the rubber band and he puts the rubber band around his wrist. And he goes, you know, Russell, the thing about life is it's just like a rubber band. And I'm like, how is life like a rubber band? And he goes, well, and he, he pulls it, he stretches it from his wrist. He goes, you know, a rubber band like life like a rubber band and he as he pulls it he goes you can put as much into it as you allow and he starts to pull and i was like you son of a bitch with your freaking wisdom that I wasn't ready to hear at this time but you're telling me in soviet so i gotta deal with it hey <laughs> so, <laughs> so and so yeah that, so the point um I guess whenever you come into a funk or even i get or a sulk even if it was a one-eighth sulk or one sixteenth sulk and, and we should always self-assess and just check in and do see how we're doing and so forth and so on, right? That's a good thing because if, if we don't do that, then one could argue that we don't really care and we should always care. And you should always check in and see how you're doing and, you know, ask others, how do you think I'm doing and so forth and so on. But um, to his whole rubber band story, it's just like, yeah, um, just when you think that you're not hitting it or if you are hitting it, you can always pull that rubber band out and you're like, oh man, I can do even more. I can do even more. So that's why I'm standing here telling you this story because I could have easily stood outside my lady friend's home and, you know, or I could say, you know what, this is an opportunity to tell a story that I've been wanting, that was told to me and 
because I needed to hear it at the time and I want to share with you because I'm sure there's somebody who is like, man, uh, and I'm like, hey, so the gift from him to me, I gift to you and I'm also a cheap son of a bitch so for me to give you this gift is much better on my budget. So thank you, um, that's it. If I don't see you or hear from you or speak to you before midnight today, have a wonderful New Year's Eve celebration. Um, be safe. Like I always tell my people, eat a lot, drink more, but in moderation, but not really in moderation. And um, that's it. <laughs> Ross, um, for New Year's, I'm going to get you a gift. And it's going to be a gift for the manual for your phone because I'm sure there's a thing where you can speak the words. You don't have to worry about typing them and screwing that up. I'm such a jerk. All right, people. Be well. Peace out. And this is for Alicia because I'm every time I try to turn off one of these things, I can never get it right. And she always says, well, say clink when you're done. So I'm going to, I've already tried to press the finish button three times. No, because Ross, I'm seeing your words and you type, mistype the word brother. Never mind. It's not even. Goodbye, everyone.